Welcome back to the channel, everybody. It's W9FFF. I'm the Ham Radio Dude. This is episode three, where today we're going to make an SCU35 programming cable that is compatible with certain Yezu radios. You might be asking, how did I come across this problem and solution? Well, pretty simple. I bought uh, these Yezu radios. I bought the FT4X. I bought the FT65, and the FT25 is on the way. Upon opening these radios, uh, these boxes and the radios, I discovered that there was no programming cable. Uh, you can easily program on the front panel display of these radios. The problem is, is sometimes you want to mass program a radio. And what I mean by that is sometimes you want to use chirp and import everything from the repeater book directory and then just write the radio and be done with it. At this point, I decided to set out on a maiden voyage and look for a programming cable to discover that, yeah, they do have programming cables at all the big stores and even, you know, Amazon and everything like that. But damn, they're expensive. And so what is the solution? The solution was easy for me. The solution was to make my own. Why would I make my own? Well, again, it's about getting involved into the hobby, but also incorporating your other hobbies. Uh, mine being electronics, I thought this was kind of a neat little project. So I set out looking for parts and I found all the parts. I'll go ahead and post the part list below, but we're going to still walk through everything that's needed before we actually get to the build. So the USB serial adapter CH340G, the CH340G a USB serial adapter. You could also use the CH340 without the G. You're going to need about two feet of cable. Uh, cable length is actually going to depend on how long of a cable you want. Two feet was good for me. You're going to need a 2.5 millimeter stereo jack, and inside of the stereo jack is a 1N4001 diode, 1N4001 diode. Not required in this episode, but I will be using one, will be a multimeter. And I'm also going to say that not required is going to be a soldering iron and uh, solder. The reason I say that's not required, because in theory you could use a breadboard and some jumper cables or jumper wires to to get everything set up and taken care of. If you do that route though, be careful not to unplug anything while the radio is programming because you could possibly brick your radio. Pulling up the schematics, we're gonna see a very simple circuit that we're gonna walk through and we're gonna just lay every part out and build it as we go. We're gonna go left from right. So here is the schematic and we're gonna start on the left, which is the USB device. If I can get this to focus, you'll see again the CH340G. And what you're going to see on the left hand side is you're going to see a ground on the top and working down three volts, five volts, TX, RX, and RST. For this serial adapter and this project, all we're going to use is ground, TX, and RX. Again, ground, TX, and RX. Once you have your USB serial adapter, we're going to start plugging the wires. And what I got here is I got three jumper wires. They are black, red, and white, black, red, and white, and they're female to female. And the reason I'm going to do this is I'm using this as a quick connect in the future so I could quick connect certain cables and plug in different programming cables so I have a, not a universal programming cable, but a programming cable that works with Ken Woods, Bao Fangs, Yezus, and so forth. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in what I got to plug in here, which is the ground. We're going to start with ground, and it's a black wire, to the device labeled GND, or ground. I'm going to use the white wire as TX, so I'm going to go ahead and plug in TX right now. White wire to TX, and finally my red wire is going to be the RX. I'm going to set this over here. Now that we have our USB and our jumper wires, which you could always solder in as opposed to doing it this way. And now we have three female disconnects. The next thing we're going to do is get about a foot of cable or whatever length you so desire and to start twisting it. So I have kept the color scheme the same, black, red, and white. And I just start in the middle and I start twisting it. And with the magic of video editing, I am complete. A great thing what video editing can do, but uh, you'll see it's not perfect. There are a couple of spots where it didn't twist as well as I had hoped. But the point is, is now I have this twisted about a foot long cable and on each end I have three exposed wires, which I've already stripped just a little bit off of each end. I'm going to grab this USB uh, serial adapter again, and I'm just going to plug in black to black, red to red, and white to white. Now this is the part I was talking about that I'm using as a quick connect disconnect so I can use multiple 
programming cables with one serial adapter, meaning I could use my Yezu, I could program a Bao thing, and I could program quite a few other things. Now, if, if you notice this, it's not fitting in correctly and it's not staying in. That means I need to strip a little more cable out right here. And it should actually stay in quite a bit like this black cable is right here. And once I get those wires all stripped correctly, I'll have three cables that plug into these jumpers and then go out to my twisted cable. Go ahead and place this slightly to the side. So we now see three exposed wires, which will actually eventually go on this stereo jack here. That's what I want to talk about now. We're going to unscrew the stereo jack. And what's going to happen is when we unscrew it, we're exposed with three different terminals. And those three terminals correlate with these three sections. So what we want to do is the first section is we want ground to be on the bottom section of the male pin. And just to find out which of these terminals is ground, we're going to take our multimeter and set it to the ohms setting, which is the little diode looking setting here. And we're going to place one prog on the actual or on the actual terminal here. And we're just going to see which one of these is Okay, cool. So we know that this terminal, the bottom terminal, correlates with this bottom section of the uh, of the actual pin or the male adapter. So we're going to use ground on that. So what it's going to look like is ground is going to go into here. Ground will be on this bottom here, just like this. And we'll solder that on in just a moment. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to see where this one goes this little pin goes and again nothing nothing and in the middle section so that's going to be the one we want to use we want to have ground as this bottom one so our black wire is going to go here and our red wire and our white wire are going to go on this little terminal right here let's see if you can see that a little better on this terminal right here and the way i know that again is by using my multimeter and seeing where there's continuity right there. And while doing this video, I found some heat shrink. What I'm going to do is I'm going to place the heat shrink over the red and the white wires. If you don't have it, it will be all right, but it's nice to have the heat shrink. That way you don't have a short in the cable later on. And now we have our soldered ground. I'm going to see if I can get you a good photo of that here. So I am into this bottom portion here and i just want to check continuity so i used the disconnects that i made i disconnected the wires from them and all i'm going to do here is i want to make sure that we're getting continuity from the bottom prong or uh, bottom portion of the male prong to the black cable and that'll tell me that uh, i correctly soldered everything and that the ground is uh, in the right sense going to be functional And I checked the other ones to make sure that continuity isn't in between these as well, meaning that I haven't soldered anything I wasn't supposed to, like the other terminals on the actual stereo jack. Next up, I'm going to take the white cable. Let me go back into the schematics here. <clears throat> the white cable being TX is going to go directly into the middle portion of the 2.5 millimeter jack. And one more time, I'm just going to make sure that I have the right prong here on the male jack and so i got one in here and one in here so this is what i'm going to solder i'm going to solder the white cable directly to that section or that terminal i now have the white cable plugged in to the middle section of the mono jack and again i'm just going to test it for continuity and i'm going to place one end in the middle here and one end here And again, I'm good. I have continuity in the middle, but I do not have it on either end. And for the last step of this process, while editing my videos, I determined and discovered that I actually didn't go through the process of the diode and what the diode is all about. So uh, this video is going to jump around just a little bit, but uh, this next step is going to be to solder this diode into place. And if I can, there we go. You'll see a diode has a, a white stripe around it or a gray stripe around it. Now, you'll also see in the diagram above that there's uh, the diode and there's a triangle and the tip of the triangle points toward the USB device. So we want this circular device here. 
Uh, let's see if I can't pull it up again. That gray circle to point toward the USB device that we'll be using. Um, so basically on the RX or on the red wire, you're gonna have that gray circle pointing toward the USB device. Now I put my diode up into here uh, because it was a really convenient spot to uh, place it, it fit well, and then it's out of the way. So the next step here is, is you're gonna see that I had already soldered the red, or excuse me, yeah, the red wired with the diode. I now have the diode soldered in place and I just wanna pull out my multimedia here real quick. It's still on the check for ohms, but it also will check to make sure that a diode is only going in one direction. So what we wanna do is we wanna take our negative lead uh, and we want to place it on the side that's closest to the circle, if you could see that. So when I have the negative lead on the side closest to the circle and I take the positive lead and I place it on the opposite side, I see, I see numbers on the multimeter, which is a great thing. Now, if I flip them around and I go the positive on this side and the negative on the opposite side, I don't see anything. And that's because a diode works as letting electricity or current flow in only one direction. And with it, you'll see because of this video, I actually did on solder this white cable when I put this on. And the only reason I did that is I did forget to put uh, the heat shrink on uh, after I took it off for just a moment. So now I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna solder this white piece back together and I'm actually gonna take this uh, diode now and I'm gonna place it on the same terminal as well. The next step is to take your heat shrink and shrink it onto those wires, the red and the white wire as mentioned before. Now that you have the white and the red wires heat shrinked, you're gonna wanna take your plastic housing unit for the stereo jack and go to the end of the connectors that connect to the jumpers or the exposed end at the moment. And you're gonna take this piece and simply put it in here and pull it all the way through. And then you're gonna place this together and screw everything in. Once that's finished, it's gonna look just like this. So it's starting to look like a cable now, which is really cool. And uh, obviously in here we have the diode, which is hooked up to the red wire. And that's gonna be our RX. We have the white wire, which is gonna go straight uh, to the TX. And then we have the black wire, which is ground. And with it, we're gonna work our way down. I went ahead and I plugged back in my connectors. And here's our USB. So I'm gonna take the USB end of things. And I'm gonna take the stereo jack and see if I can't get these on video. And I just, one more time, I wanna test full continuity and make sure that everything is happening as it should be. Uh, I think that'll be fine for now. Grab my progs again. Uh, for ground, it's not going to matter, so we just want to make sure that there's... Okay, good. That means that ground is working, but let's make sure it's not happening on any other sections. Nothing's grounding out, so we're good there. Uh, as far as the TX goes, I'm just going to put my little uh, prong here within that little connector slot where there's a little bit of conductivity. And I want to make sure that we only have conductivity in the middle. So nothing on the end, nothing on the end but we do in the middle. And finally, the red one, the RX, we're not gonna hear the conductivity, but if I look at my multimeter, again, I should have a reading. And I do. And just to make sure I don't have it on any other ones. And I do not, so we're good. I have now pulled up Chirp. If you're not familiar with Chirp, it's a programming software that you could use in Windows, Macintosh, or Linux. And the nice thing about it is it supports a lot of different radios. So for example, this version of Chirp does support the FT4X as well as the 65R. Uh, all I'm gonna do here is I have the cable plugged into the USB. I have it plugged into my radio. My radio is now on. I'm gonna click radio and I'm gonna click download from radio. What's gonna happen after about a minute or so, it's gonna give me an option for a COM port. And I'm showing COM port seven. So, so far I'm actually seeing a good uh, a good sign because it looks like my USB has been detected. My vendor is Yezu and the model is the FT4XR that I'm using. So I'm going to click OK and I have the programming cable plugged in the mic jack so I'm going to press OK again and if all goes well it should read all the data on there. Now the next video I'm going to make is going to be a very similar video. It's going to be how to make a cable for a bow thing. Not much to it except we're going to add a 3.5 millimeter stereo jack and you don't need the diode. 
Uh, we'll get to that in a later video, but uh, thank you very much for checking out this video. I really do appreciate it. Uh, if it did help you out, please hit the like button and please subscribe for future videos. Uh, cloning on the radio is just about done. And when it is done, we'll see that it actually pulled up everything from my radio that I had, all these little local Illinois repeaters. And the last thing that there is to do, I guess, would be to write something to the radio. Um, so I'm just going to use this open slot here. And we're going to program, uh, we'll call it 144.200, even though I wouldn't use that. So I'm just going to program that in there. And we're going to go to radio and upload radio to make sure everything's working with the upload as well. Again, you got to wait just a couple seconds. COM7 shows the radio. Good to go. Click OK. Click OK. Cloning the radio, and it looks like it's cloning fine. So during the process, I don't touch anything. As I mentioned, I have those quick connect disconnects. I would hate for those to disconnect while I was programming a radio. I guess it could potentially brick the radio. If you do have any comments, suggestions, uh, you want to see any videos in the future, just let me know. Uh, I do like these tutorials. I think this this simple walkthrough helps out a lot of people. It's going to help out people who are just getting started, maybe people who can't afford a $30 cable. I think in total I may have spent $10 on this cable. And so that's everything. Uh, with it, uh, we're going to call that a day. And the radio did finish cloning, and everything did finish writing. We're going to call it a day. Uh, again, thank you for checking out this video, and until next time, 73.